We'll assume we're going to connect. There we go. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Um, tired. Very yeah. Tired. Like, like I was, I was doing really well with like, I'm like, spring is here. This is great. I'm happy. And then it yeah. got cold again. And I don't, yeah. I don't like that. And it looks like it's going to be kind of on the chilly side for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, sorry, I got distracted for a second. We got this pop up when we started here, and my mind is still on that pop up. And like, I hope everything was okay, and that we're recording, and that we're truly here, and all of those things. So, I hope um, so. <laughs> I hope so too. Live, so. All right. Good morning. We see a good morning. That's good. Um, yeah, I know. I think it's going to be a little bit colder for a while too, because I got my plants. I have some seedlings that I started inside. Mm -hmm. I tend to start vegetable plants and herbs inside, and I have them all pulled together to go put in. A greenhouse I have a it sounds more more exciting than it is I have basically like this it's this frame and then it has this big sheet of plastic you put over it right. yes. um, and so I have that greenhouse and I'm gonna go I wanted to go put them out there this week and I still will because it's about time for that and the greenhouse is supposed to protect them from the cold that's the whole point and as long as right. it's sunny, yeah. it gets warm in there but it just doesn't feel right it doesn't feel right like right. here we go plants let's go outside and they're like shiver I'm sh I'm wearing a coat they're right. shivering. Um, but I realized that they would have, um, you know, if they were, if I were like a real operation, they would be in a greenhouse right now and they'd be right. okay. But my greenhouse is also not a legit, it's a piece of plastic. So I don't, right. we'll see. <laughs> yes. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> that was like a whole lot. I'm like, all right. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but I'm going to, so I'm going to do that. Hopefully the plants will be fine, but it just, when I'm looking ahead, I'm like, there's not like a sunny 68 degree day in their near future. They're just going to kind of be like out there wrapped in plastic. Like, you know, I should put little, little hats on them, sweaters, mittens. Keep us warm. I, I have a plant. It's, it's one of those that's, it's for outside and I got it at the store. They're like already selling that stuff. I'm yeah. Like, when do I put it outside? Is it too soon to put it outside? Like, yeah. is it hardy? What does that mean? I don't right. know. So. Right. Yeah, you don't want it to freeze for sure. So, yeah, yeah. I've got, I don't know. You just, it's, you get excited. You get excited yeah. and you want to get Absolutely. get going. But, yeah, it's kind of taken a turn and it feels a little less <laughs> soon now. Right. I am also drinking out of my uh, my gift mug from you, my coffee mug. <laughs> that has the... Uh, Dewey number for coffee on it. I'm we'll drinking out of a, a, I don't know if you can see the design on there. It's the Pisces. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, cool. So I've got that mug today. Um, and I've had, I've had a probably more from this mug than I normally do on a, on a Friday morning. Cause I do try to rein it in so that I'm coherent. And I don't need and, to run to the restroom while we're on the air. <laughs> 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 Gotta limit myself. Uh, Judith says that Mother's Day is the rule of thumb for planting outdoors. Thank yes. you, Judith. That will be a very helpful. But it's just hard to, you just want to. Mm -hmm. You just want to make it happen. And it's like, we're already at the point where we have to start, we've had to start mowing. Like That's, that's a really good point. It doesn't seem fair to have to mow right. the yard, but not have fun stuff in it. Right, exactly. Exactly. Not fair at all. No. So. And I'm gonna, I actually have a family wedding to go to the weekend of Mother's Day. So um, I will be, because that is the weekend I typically do, like as long as the weather's good. So I'll be having to, maybe I can convince the world to behave a week before. <laughs> maybe I can get it out there the week before. <laughs> Allison needs good weather. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just send that, send that out in the right. world. <laughs> so I, I'm getting my um, second vaccine this afternoon. That's I'm right. Very you excited are. about that. You are. You're the. You're part of the first wave. I mean, I won't say the actual first wave, <laughs> but like the first wave of library people that I I know. You yeah. know, and so I'm going to be watching you closely to see how you react to find out how I react. I'm a little nervous, especially since I have to work tomorrow. And I've talked to a few people who've had some like, ooh, the second one was a lot harder reactions yeah. to to the vaccine. So. Um, yeah. if you come to the library tomorrow and I'm not smiling, maybe <laughs> it's, of course you wouldn't know that anyway, cause I'm wearing a mask, but if I'm just 
Hello, can I help you? It's because of the, va the vaccine. It's not because I'm a bad person. It's, it's nothing personal. And but also, see people people who come into the library have the advantage of only seeing you post 10 a.m. as well. Because if you speak to you at the library, that's kind of how you. <laughs> if you speak to me, you you are, in the library, morning, I might have to be like. Tone it down. I called her the other morning and she's like, hello, good morning. And I was like, Allison, tone it down. Yeah. What, what you said, which I'll never forget because it was hilarious, was I'm going to need you to tone that down is what she said. I was like, hello, good morning. And then I was like, it was okay. just like, so bright and chipper and like the tone of her voice was like an octave higher than normal. And I'm just like, huh, not today. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, Hey, morning. <laughs> Which I appreciated. I, I, needed, no, yeah. I needed it closer to my level. And mornings <laughs> are not, not my time of day. For people who come into the library, it's after 10 a.m. And I feel like that's enough time for you to transition into yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> friendly Leah. <laughs> I don't understand why mornings ha have to start so early. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, why yeah. are people like energetic in the morning and like raring to go and like waiting for places to open first thing in the morning? Like, that is not me. I know. So I never be me. Like, I, am I just know. Like, if it's I, I know. early, I have been the person sitting in the parking lot in my car waiting for a store to open. <laughs> that happened once. I did that once, and it was because. I was going out of town that day and I desperately needed something for my trip. I think that's the only time I've ever opened a store. <laughs> and this, the very sad thing was, I don't remember what time they opened at this time. It's been a while. Everything's different now because of the pandemic. Things do open later and, you know, have different hours and stuff. But I remember one time I was waiting for Joanne Fabrics to open and I felt very, very old. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I I don't know. Yeah, it was one of those places in which I get not that ever. I just, I just felt very old that I was waiting for a craft store to open. I was there too early for the craft store to be open, and I was waiting to get my supplies. Yeah, that will never happen to me. <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, 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 oh! I did have some exciting news. I wanted yeah. to share. Totally jumping tracks. We're talking about books now because no, do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Go tell the bees that I am gone. Diana Gabaldon's book number nine in the Outlander series. Okay. Bees that I'm gone now has publication date. It's coming out November 23rd. And I'm super excited. That's great. I actually this is ringing a bell now that you've mentioned before that there's like more coming, but there's never a date associated yes. with them. There's book number nine, book number 10, and then there's going to be a prequel about Jamie's parents. I see. I see. That's yes. great. Good. And it's coming out November of this year? Yes. Awesome. Um, so it'll probably be like five years before book number 10 is out <laughs> because it takes forever. Yeah. She has put yeah. a lot of research and a lot of detail into her books. Like they're very well researched. So she's got lots yeah. of actual information in them. Um, they're historical in nature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so there's, you know, there's time travel, but that's just, that's just whatever. Right, and, right. I'll pay attention to that part. Um, uh, but yes, they're fabulous. And book nine is coming out in November. Hey, that's great. Is that the show that Jamie Dornan is in? Jamie What is he in? I I I I don't know him. Okay, that's fine. Maybe somebody can IMDB that for us. I don't think Andrea is in our audience today. She usually fact checks our movies. <laughs> um I ask because um because I watched the movie Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. Recently, it's a comedy starring uh, Kristen Wiig, and he is in that. And I thought he might have been that guy from Outlander, but I could also be very wrong. No, he's not the guy from Outlander. Okay. Um, um, I don't know what he's in. 
He was in um, Fifty Shades of Grey movies. Oh, okay. Um, okay, never mind. That's an, that's enough. I just knew he was in something I don't watch, and that people find him attractive. That was that was my my in there. Um, he, he was also in a a series um, with Mulder. Yeah. Um, or Scully. Which one is which? I forget. Mulder. Mulder's the man, and Scully's the woman. Scully. He was in. He was, okay. he was in in uh, the fall with her. That oh, was, okay. I never was, watched that. It was um, a murder mystery. Yeah, thing, I remember so. it. I remember. I remember like it being. So I watched Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. It's a comedy starring Kristen Wiig, and he is in it as well. And if you're a fan of him, he is very endearing in that movie. Um, but it was just a really funny and absurd comedy. And I've talked before to many people, anyone who will listen, about how I feel like I haven't gotten to watch a lot of just like straight up silly comedies in the past however many years. A lot of the times they're like a little bit dark or they're like combined with like comedy horror or a lot of action comedy I think is popular now, which yeah. isn't really my bag, like The Rock or whatever. But um, this was just... Oh, I like him too, but like I don't, I don't want to. I just don't. I'm not an action fairy. What? No, <laughs> like family comedy movies, action comedy movies, Jumanji. Those just aren't my my I, thing. I, I don't really watch those either. <laughs> I, but but I get why people like them, and so um, so anyway, this was just more more my speed, but it is absurd and silly. So if anybody is looking for something, it so. It, you you would know when you started if you're gonna like it or not. But um, yeah. there are also a couple musical numbers that I was not anticipating, so that was fun. And so I just recommend if anyone's looking for something really just off the wall and uh, lighthearted. There's no irony to it. There's no like black humor. It's just it's just, it's just what it is. It's just silly. We're, we're, we're trying to make you laugh, and that's yeah. all there is. We're not making a commentary. That looks. That looks cute. I'm gonna have to check that one it's out. Basically, about these two Midwestern, middle-aged Midwestern ladies who go to Vista Del Mar, Florida. They've never been on a vacation like that before. I don't even know if they've been out of their town before, and they just they go and they're gonna have a great time on vacation. <laughs> Mary backs you up, and she says it's a very good movie. <laughs> well, that's what, just, you mentioned Outlander, and for some reason, I thought he was the guy from that, but he must be the guy from Fifty Shades of Grey. Maybe because his name is Jamie. And the character in Outlander's name is Jamie. That could Maybe be. That's, that's, that's probably. That could be. Yeah. Speaking of Fifty Shades of Grey, there's also going to be, I don't know how many of these, maybe they already are, but I know that there's going to be that thing where they write from the perspective of the other person. So like mm -hmm. they're writing from Christian's perspective. I got an email that Freed is going to be out this year, which is Fifty Shades Freed from Christian Grey's perspective, like yes. they did with Twilight. So. Um, is that the second one or the third one? I feel like that's the third one. I haven't read them, but I think that's the third one. I thought that the second one had already come out, but yeah. So just that's that's another. Like I said, we've talked about Twilight on here before, where you said they're you know written from Edward's perspective. Yeah. They're also doing that with this book. So, well, you have to do everything the same when you're fan fictioning it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you have any other book news? Um, well, that was really all I was super excited about. Yeah. Um, because that got announced this week. And yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just. Well, I cool. did attend, well, attend and then watch in later portions too. Um, one of these events that they have that you've gone to too before where they have author talks it's the type of thing that we wouldn't get to go to if it were in person because right. it would be some other place. And But now because of COVID, a lot of things have become online, which means so many more people can go because you can just listen on your computer. You can watch at your at will. Um, and so I went to something recently that had some author conversations. And one of them was with Andy Weir, uh, who has his new book, Project Hail Mary, coming out. And so I got to listen to him talk, which was kind of fun. Um, and I appreciated one thing he said, which was, Someone asked him how, just, you know, how do you write these science fiction books? How do you keep up with all the science that you're putting into it? How do you research? How do you know what's true, what's not, you know? And he said he, he just researches it. But what he 
found finds comforting about writing science fiction is that science has already figured out the bounds he has to write in. He's not writing a fantasy novel. He's not writing something that he made up that he has to keep track of okay. his world and his universe. Science has already done that. So he finds comfort in writing science fiction because there's already rules. There's already right and wrong answers. He just has to give. And he says that when there's a problem, when he's like, well, how, how am I going to do that? He's like, that's not my problem to solve. That's Mark Watney's problem to solve, who is his character, you know, so <laughs> he has to figure it out. And I just right. thought it was interesting because I can imagine, I see the perspective of the person who asked the question, how do you even keep up with all of this? And for him, it's comforting because there's already all these rules. He just gets to write someone figuring it out. And I thought that was interesting. And I thought- It was really yeah. interesting. <laughs> but that's, that's also a fun way to tackle the problem is it's like, you're not tackling the problem. You're figuring out how they're going to tackle the problem. So yes. yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. So I had that, that uh, bit of book news. And then another book that they mentioned or an author I saw speak on there. Um, this book is not, I'm not sure when it comes out. I should have looked it up, but it's called <laughs> Dare to Know. And it's a speculative thriller about a man who works for a company that can, it's probably set in the near future. He works for a company that can predict your death date, like down to the second and um, it's not like it's routine. It's at this point, it's almost routine. Like it's not like this crazy thing. It's we're at a point in the future where that's something that can be predicted through an algorithm. But um, you're never How supposed to like, in, like car accidents and stuff like that. I, I think it's like all this. Like I don't know, man. I didn't read it yet. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> to throw problems at you. There's an algorithm. I don't know. Um, and it's set in the future. So we figured that out by now, I guess. But I guess the one rule is that you're not, if you work at the company, you're not supposed to like run your own prediction. And he does. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that he, it says that he died 23 minutes ago, but he's still alive. And the algorithm is never supposed to be wrong. And so um, the book, I think, is about whatever, wherever that leads him, uncovering some things. I don't. I don't know. Um, of course, it's not out yet. The author is named James Kennedy. The book is called Dare to Know. Um, and I just thought that sounded like a fun concept. That and, does. and someone in the comments brought up, do you remember, it's been around since like the late 90s. There was a website called like deathclock.com. I, I think it still exists or something like that, where you just like yeah. clicked a button and it was like, this yeah. is when you will die. <laughs> and, um, and so he said he was taking, you know, taking off from the way that the internet yeah. and technology used to feel like it could do anything. Like, is this imagining that it really could do this? What you want to know though, like it's, it's like one of those things, like I, I, I wouldn't want to know, but then I there's one of those, like, how, how do you not, how do you not know? Especially if it's one of those things that's become like so accessible, like everyone does it. Like how, how do you not find out? Like, yeah, That's I don't really terrible information. I don't know that I could live with that information. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess I would have to if it were correct, because then I wouldn't die till this day. But I just I don't know that I don't know how I would function in my life with that information. Yeah. And you can't I know it. Definitely change how you lived your life, you know? Yeah. I think it definitely would. And Audrey says that she does not want to know. Mm. And nor does Carrie. So yeah. I don't think I, I need to know that. Yeah, I don't think I need to it's, it's, it's weird. Like, if that were a possibility. I read one book. I don't even remember. It was a YA book. And I don't even remember what book it was. Sorry, my eye keeps watering. Um, where, like, everyone died on their 80th birthday. Oh. Like, technology, like, medical technology had advanced enough that keeping people alive wasn't an issue, but um, overpopulation was. <laughs> so it's like, uh, 80s enough, 80s, 80s <laughs> amount of time to live. So yeah. like, nearing your 80th birthday, like how do you, how yeah. Do you do that? yeah, I wouldn't want to know. Weird. Yeah. No, no, that I agree. I don't think I want to know either. Do you have something lighthearted to talk about to transition out of where we yeah. found ourselves? Um. <laughs> Lighthearted, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't. Did you talk about this book before? No. Oh no, but I remember that book. Whether I didn't talk about it on here, there's a chance I called somebody to say, "Hey, look at this thing we just got," but it wasn't on here. 
this book is absolutely amazing. A Cat's Tale, A Journey Through Feline History um, by Baba the Cat as dictated to Paul Kudinaris. I don't, I don't know how to spell I'm glad that. That, that both are being properly credited there. Right, yes. <laughs> and it's, it's history, world history, through the cat's perspective and the cat's, um, look at that, look at that title page with the cat eye. Um, but the cat is appropriately dressed for each period. <laughs> and sorry, this is backwards. So I'm always moving at the oh, wrong way. You're fine. Yes, there's a. Oh my gosh. Yes. yes oh my the, gosh. The, the cat. And like, there's space travel cat. <laughs> and oh my gosh, I do remember. I remember this book because, well, how do you forget it? And reassure me, is that in six thirty six point eight? Yes, that's the cat number. Okay, just making it's sure I didn't number. put that in the world history number. Look at that sailor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's adorable and. Like there's this one picture where the cat is dressed up. Um, <laughs> seafaring cat. Oh my gosh! But there's really this one adorable. dressed up like in like a a oh I should have marked the page, but it's got like this very adorable expression on its face, and it's supposed to be like a witch or something, and it's just like it's just too cute. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. What is he? What is he supposed to be in that picture? I don't know. Adorable. Adorable. Well, that's all he really needs to be. According to the devil's own plan, so maybe the devil. Um... <laughs> oh, this this must be the occult page because they're okay. as a witch. Oh my gosh! And then as the devil. Oh my goodness. But I think it was like in the back. It was showing like some pictures like that. But he's just dressed up as like this devil, but he's got like this adorable little oh. expression on his face that is so not at all. Oh my God. It's just, it's adorable. And I love this book. So I'm very glad you, I'm very glad you found that and brought that because it needs to be seen. It right? Needs to be seen. Yes. Uh, speaking of adorable things, I did bring this. A picture book. Um, I know that it just, I, I think there are picture books that are great for adults and children. Um, we actually got, we got several recently, but one of them I didn't get a hold on in time and I sent it out. But um, this one I did, it's called Something's Wrong by Jory John and Aaron Cron. Um, but the subtitle is A Bear, A Hair, and Some Underwear. And what, what is the subtitle? A bear, a hair, and some underwear. <laughs> um, and I just brought it because the pictures are super cute. And basically the bear is named Jeff and he wakes up one day and he's just going on his walk and everyone, he feels like something's wrong. He says, I feel really odd so off, but I don't know what it is. And he keeps saying hello to his friends and they're all like making these faces at him. Their eyes are really big. And after he walks away, they're like, why is that bear wearing underwear? And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't, for, they don't say it to him and he doesn't understand why he feels weird. And I just wanted to show you because like these pictures of this bear and this underwear are so cute. His little tail sticking out the back and they come up pretty high and I just love, I love it. And so as he feels like increasingly awkward, like he'll be like, oh, hi, hi everybody. How are you? You're looking good, happy and healthy. Am I right or am I right? Small day we're having. And he just has like this long paragraph of like increasingly <laughs> awkward banter with people, which yes. I feel like adults can relate to uh, yes, very well, very much so. uh, more than children even. And <laughs> so at the, you know, near the end, he does encounter this entire group of people and you can see all their eyes are like, I don't know, they're just drawn in such a way that they're all really big. And they're like, why is he wearing underwear? And uh, he gets so awkward, everything becomes in all caps. And uh, then at the end, because I'll spoil it because it's a children's book and, you know, there's not, there's not not enough plot for me to not spoil it. Um, 
But at the end, his friend stands up for him and he's like, well, what are you guys doing not wearing underwear? And so then by the end, everyone has has their own underwear, including what you won't be able to see on camera, but there's a snake that's wearing just basically like a tube. Um, <laughs> well, Alice, what a way. What right. a snake wear underwear. It's very cute. It's called Something's Wrong. And uh, he just, he, his grandma gave him some underwear. He had them on at home, but he doesn't normally wear underwear and he forgot he was wearing them and he wore them out of the house and everyone's yeah. like, why are you wearing underwear? I mean, it could happen to the best of us. So, um, that was wearing just, underwear. <laughs> so that was very cute. And, uh, I just, I like to share things every now and then that you might not see otherwise, especially our adult audience may not yes. venture. I, I, I need to spend more time in with the picture books because like the more I see them, the more I love them. And it just, yeah. Yeah. I missed out there. Like I should, I should definitely spend time with the picture books. They're, they're, they're a really nice. Like his anxiety. And Audrey says that it's like a high school anxiety dream. Yes, it is. It is. And uh, picture books are great, especially, I mean, not everybody works in the library, but as someone who works in the library, there are really great, like, like uplifting, yes. you know, like you're doing some stuff and then you're like, let me read this picture book. And it just, I don't know. It feels good. I don't know where to go next with after, after that book. Cause both of these kind of, I'll go this one. Okay. Um, friend shipping, mm -hmm. um, the art of finding friends, being friends and keeping friends by Jen Bain and Trin Gar Garitano. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, how do you meet yeah. new people and mastering the art of small talk, which I think a lot of us introverts struggle, struggle with. Um, it's one of those like, yeah, it's just, it's really hard like making friends as an adult. Either you make friends at work, which I work with awesome people. So yay, that's easy right. to do. Or you have friends that you've had for years. Like making friends mm -hmm. other ways is really awkward. Yeah. Like how, how do you do it? I don't know. It just. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is a very useful book and to talk about just, yeah. What is it like to make and keep friends specifically as friends, not like yeah. you said, as coworkers who are right. also great. So that's convenient, but how do you just make and keep friends for the sole purpose of friendship? <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's very strange. And it's one of those things that I have never figured out. <laughs> right. I think a lot of people, a lot of adults probably, yeah, have not. Yeah. And if, if you don't already have that built in group of people that you're going to associate with and learn about just because of you spend a third of your life around them, <laughs> you know, um, how, how else do you get out and meet people? Yeah. That's a great one. That's mm -hmm. a good one to bring. So. Um, what do I, I'm sorry, I'm also halfway distracted because for some reason there's a school bus reversing down my street. Um, I'm not, with the, the backup, the beeping backup and everything. I can't, yeah. just can't imagine what's happening there. Um, why, never mind. I won't it's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but I definitely, it's the first time I've ever seen that. Um, what do I have next? This couldn't, I don't have as much to say about this and I feel like, uh, it's not as great of a topic, but I've been excited about this book for a while. It's called Exercised, Why Something We Never Evolved to Do is Healthy and Rewarding by Daniel Lieberman. Um, and he's an evolutionary, a human evolutionary biology professor at Harvard and a pioneering researcher on the evolution of human physical activity. And so it's just talking about, um, he uses research and real experience and um, just talks about how, you know, we have an increasingly sedentary lifestyle. And of course, before we weren't doing exercise for recreation, we were doing exercise, exercise to stay alive. We were hunting, we were, you know, just living I, our lives. I was very obviously meant to be like um, royalty in the Middle Ages. So, <laughs> and so, you know, that's as far as I evolved. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good place to stop, though, honestly. Um, <laughs> And so it just talks about how do we make sense of the conflicting information about rest, physical, act physical activity and exercise. Is sitting really the new smoking? Can you lose weight by walking? But it's not an, an exercise or diet book. It's a science book about 
the impact of exercise on our body and yeah. why there's, there's charts and graphs. Um, and so I was well, just- Some exercise like while good for you is also very hard on the body, like running. You know, mm -hmm. people end up with knee issues or ankle issues or hip issues. And like, yeah. and like once you, I've had several friends who've very seriously injured themselves running, not like by falling, but yeah. like joints, joint issues. Yeah. And then you have to step away from it for a while and then getting back into it is really right. hard. Right. Yeah, so right. I, I skip that danger. Right. Just, um, <laughs> just don't even, it's not, it's not worth that risk. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to get hurt by a bus while I'm out bicycling or right. jogging like that. That is a risk that I have completely eliminated for myself. So eliminate that risk entirely. But I wasn't, so for those of you, other people who may be interested in how we evolve <laughs> it, to incorporate physical activity in our lives and what we should incorporate for our physical evolution. Anyway, so I was excited about that. I don't know if I'm going to get through it or not because it is very long and it does have old. So my my window to read it is limited. But um, but anyway, I brought that because we don't talk about that kind of stuff a lot on here. Um, yeah, I never talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> What's next? Do you have something else? Yeah. Um, I found this book and I think it's just really adorable. It's Dandelion by uh, Gabby Hanna. She wrote it and illustrated it. Aww. It's um, a bunch of, she's the author of Adult Lessons, which is, <laughs> which I just, I love that title. Right. Um, kind of like poems. I, like I look at them and I think poems, sure. but it's got a very um, Shel Silverstein feel to it when mm -hmm. I flip through because of like her illustrations and like yeah. her illustrations aren't like in his style. They're very much. No, her, I, it's a but, poem or a short prose situation and then an accompanying line drawing. I can see yeah, that. Yeah. 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 So it's got that, that, that Shel Silverstein feel to it, except, you know, for adults, and um, <laughs> I just I you know, I just flip through here and it just brings back those memories of of um, yeah. reading those poetry books and loving yeah. them. So I can't wait to, to get into this. And Mary says that she started out on YouTube, which I oh. didn't know. I didn't know she that's was cool. a YouTuber. So well, that's neat. Thanks for bringing that one. I it's did twenty million followers. Who knew? But um, but yeah, I thought that was really really yeah and i like the you know the modern take on on life right right um i have one more I that really i really like this one because oh, that's it's on a checkerboard so yeah. the, the text switches from like mid word or mid sometimes even mid letter uh between white and black so that is very like you i think you're right on spot on with the shell silverstein thing yeah was this you know, this was written in a circle. Oh, because, cool. You know, yeah. It, yeah, it totally has, has that feel to it. I'm going to write that one down. Dandelion. And I'll probably get that through that a lot faster than exercised. <laughs> <laughs> probably. There's like this much text. Most <laughs> I'm looking at that circle poem and I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> right. Um, I have one more that I definitely wanted to talk about because it um, hits on some of the other things we've discussed in other shows. It's called The Happily Ever After, a memoir of an unlikely romance novelist by <laughs> Avi Steinberg. Okay. And um, I'm just gonna actually read the beginning of this because it was better said than I could summarize anyway. Um, when Avi Steinberg's life took a grim turn, he did what he always does. He consulted his old books, the usual cast of great, very serious, usually male authors, and he immediately realized that these books were a part of the problem. Instead, he began to read romances, the books he had been conditioned to dismiss as trashy. What he discovered was a genre that was tremendously diverse and daring, along with a vast network of innovative writers who were keeping the novel as alive as ever. And so basically he decides to write one and the book is about him writing a romance novel. It's about him going to major industry conferences, uh, meeting in, romance writers, you know, groups where you okay, share your work yeah. together, workshops. Um, and he says that his, he finds that his uh, like relationship problems were due to a failure of imagination and um, of what, you know, romance could be. Right, and yeah. 
but just in here, it says that he also meets he meets mysterious ghostwriters and Fabio's great unsung rival, which I can only imagine is Jason Aaron Baca. It has to be. <laughs> it, like has to be. it has Who else to be. be. So I felt like this was probably for people like us who we, we have different reading tastes too, but people mm -hmm. who either read romances occasionally or a lot, but who who know that there's more to them than what people think. Exactly. And I think, you know, a lot of the like the books that you go to like and you read for comfort, a lot goes into that. Like you look at a picture book and it's it might be 28 pages long and have this much text per page. But what goes into making a good children's book is a lot more than just writing 10 or 12 sentences. Like, yeah. You know, sometimes I think about that. Like, you're, I'll read them, like, this is so simple and yet so mm -hmm. meaningful. Like, it's really yeah. teaching you something yeah. or showing you something that you might not think about. And it right. just, yeah, it's like 10 right. sentences long. Right. <laughs> But it yes. tells a complete story, and it just—it's really yeah. interesting to see and to think about the craft that goes into it because it's not—it's yeah. not as simple as it looks sometimes. No, it absolutely is not. And Audrey threw in that writing short stuff is hard, and it yeah. can't, I think it probably is. And then she mentions easy readers are some of the hardest things to write, and that's in part too because you're you're trying to write for a child to be able to learn to read. And understand what you're writing, but still grow as a re I mean, my goodness. And you know? tell a story. Yeah, tell a story. To, yes. Because it's, yeah. you know, just writing easy words is one thing. Writing easy words that tell a story is is more difficult. Absolutely. And, and for those people who can do it, for people who can do it and also engage the, the parent or the guardian or the caregiver who's reading to the kid or the librarian on her lunch break who's reading the book, <laughs> right. um, you know, that... That's even more impressive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I always I always enjoy kid shows where they sneak in adult humor that the kids. It totally you know mm -hmm. you you watch it with a kid and you're like I can't believe they just said that right. and the kids don't get it. like it just right over their head. But it it it, it it's entertaining for them and the adults <laughs> on a different level. Yes, there's a little bit extra there. Yeah, I think so too. And I imagine. Those are probably the things you have a little less annoyance when they're playing on repeat in the background when your kid can't stop watching this. At least you know it's not just. I I don't know. I have no point of reference, but I feel like those are probably less annoying. Yes, um, As, I, I I love some of the cartoons that are made for kids. I will admit it. I'm totally. I enjoy kids shows way more than I should. <laughs> But um, I think one of my favorite ever cartoons, um, Phineas and Ferb. Oh, I yeah. That one just was so smart and clever. And yeah. Dr. Doofenshmirtz is like amazing. And whoever does not love Dr. Doofenshmirtz is just wrong. So I've never seen Phineas and Ferb. So I mean, past the point of me being. Yeah, um, whatever. I I didn't. It because I fuse for the right age, you know, I would watch it with them. So yeah. but, oh, it's so good. Audrey agrees with me. And um, yes, Phineas and Ferb is just one of those super smart, clever cartoons that I just, I will forever love. Oh, well, that is great to know. And good, a good note to end on. I've never watched it, but I'm glad to know that that is a worthwhile <laughs> And hopefully less annoying than some of those other. Very much less annoying. Like it's engaging, even for yeah. adults. I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> uh, this is not quite for kids, but Mary watched Degrassi way past the age group it was made for and love it. So I also watched that show. Less less for children than Phineas and Ferb, though. More for right. your teenager set. Teenagers, right. Yes. Teen. I did. I spent many I'm summer nights watching Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> No. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we did not put our books up from last week because of me, because they had been in my notebook sitting at my table all week long and I never brought it in to work to do what I was supposed to do with it. 
Um, and then I got caught up okay. in something else this morning. So I also didn't do it this morning, but I have ripped them out of the notebook and I have put them in my bag. So they will come into work with me. So now, now the only thing we're waiting on is for me to type them into that document. And then we can do that with the books from today. Um, oh, yeah. do. I will, we will, so we will get it up. We will get these documents up <laughs> very soon. And yeah. many personal apologies because I was the hold up this time. And it looks like a couple people wanted that cat book. So I will return it. So, so someone else can have a turn with it. Right. We'll put it on, we'll put it on the list and then, yeah, just, we'll put it on our text list and then you might have to put it on hold. It sounds like, because right. it's. It'll be quarantined for four days after I return it. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was All right. Well, it was great to hang out today and great to see everybody. Um, yeah, we'll be back again next week to do it all over again. Join us then. <laughs> we'll see you then, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.